Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. I've created about four videos on the connective tissues and in this first one we'll just quickly cover the main characteristics of the connective tissues along with their functions. Remember that there are four tissue categories in the body. We've, we've already studied the epithelial tissues. We're about to study here the connective tissues then there are the muscle tissues, and then finally there is a nervous tissue. Uh, for the muscle tissues, I've mentioned before, you have three. You have the skeletal muscle tissue, you have the cardiac muscle tissue, and then you have smooth muscle tissue, which you only find in the walls of hollow organs. We'll discuss these muscle tissues when we get to the muscular system. And uh, accordingly, we'll, we'll study the nervous tissue when we get to the nervous system. So of these four tissue categories, your connective tissues are definitely the most widespread. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of connective tissues or even locations that are made up of connective tissues. So this will be a, a mixture of organs and even connective tissue names. And then you'll very quickly <clears throat> excuse me, realize how widespread the connective tissues are and also what their major functions are. So for instance, blood, believe it or not, is considered a connective tissue. Your bone tissues or the bones are made up of bone tissue that is considered connective tissue, the cartilages. Your skin, which would be an organ obviously. What else? Tendons and ligaments. By the way, what is the difference between these two? Remember that a tendon connects muscle to muscle. I'll just put, I'm sorry, muscle to bone. While ligaments interconnect bone, bones with one another like so. I hope you can follow my abbreviations. Fat tissue is also a good example of a connective tissue. And so that should help you you know, come up with these various major functions that you see listed here. Now, the reason for why these tissues are referred to as connective tissues is because they provide a lot of binding and support, but even more so, they interconnect other tissues. In other words, You know, if we take a look at the location of your epith... If we take a look at a hollow organ, let's say I sketched that here near the top, remember that your hollow organ is always going to be lined with epithelial tissue first, and then you're going to <clears throat> have connective tissue, and I'm running out of space here, and that then is followed by muscle tissue and nervous tissue, and then eventually, eventually, uh, as our covering will get back to epithelial tissue. But the point is, notice where that epithelial tissue sits. It's going to be sitting in between tissues. That's very different, right, from the epithelial tissues, which are always going to face some kind of a lumen, or of course, in the case of the skin, they face the atmosphere, right? So epithelial tissues, they express polarity, because of that apical surface that they always have, connective tissues do not. So that leads us into the characteristics of the connective tissues. Um, and we can go back to the characteristics that we might remember from the epithelial tissues. For one, I already mentioned that connective tissues uh, do not express polarity, so you might as well add that here if we're comparing them to the... Um, epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues were avascular and we see that amongst the connective tissues there are going to be tissues that are very vascularized, some are going to be less vascularized, and then we have one group of connective tissues that is sharing the feature of avascularity with the epithelial tissues and those are your cartilages. So just like the epithelial tissues, the cartilages are also avascular. Now remember when you looked and studied at all these slides of epithelial tissue, 
the cells were very close together like so, right? Or they might have been more square like so. In other words, there was very little extracellular material. That is not the case typically in the connective tissues. There we actually see lots of extracellular material. In other words, the tissues are not as cellular as we see in the epithelial tissue. So there going to, there's going to be lots of space in between the cells. Now the typical term we use for extracellular material when we're talking about the connective tissues is to use the term matrix. So from this point forward, when I use the term matrix, realize that what I'm referring to is all that stuff outside of the cells of the connective tissues. Um, and you'll see what that stuff is. I'm purposely using a, a non-scientific term because we're about to study the matrix in more depth in the next video. So the extracellular mat material in connective tissues we prefer to call the matrix. Finally, with regards to the epithelial tissues, we learned that epithelial tissues can develop from the embryological layer we call the endoderm or the mesoderm or the ectoderm. Remember, there are three embryonic germ layers. It's quite different for the connective tissues. There are many connective tissues, as, as you'll discover in these uh, videos that I'm making, <clears throat> and every one of them, every one of our connective tissues actually arises, or we can say is derived from that middle layer of the embryo called the mesoderm. And so some of the cells of the mesoderm are going to start differentiating and eventually they become some kind of a connective tissue, bone tissue, cartilage tissue, blood, the tissue that makes up the ligaments and the tendons, etc. Now on their way to becoming these fully mature connective tissues, these mesodermal cells first differentiate further into what we call mesenchyme. So your embryo has many, mes many mesenchyme cells in it, and those mesenchyme cells can only become connective tissue, um, nothing else. On the other hand, in the mesoderm, there will also be cells that could become uh, muscle tissue, for instance. But still, the whole point here that I'm trying to make is that uh, um, all these connective tissues that we're about to study, every one of them actually can be tracked all the way back to one of the cells in the mesoderm layer of the embryo. Now, another comment about these mesenchyme cells. So these mesenchyme cells we can still think of as stem cells, right? Because they still have the ability to make all kinds of cells, namely all the different cell types needed to make one of these connective tissues. Interestingly enough, we find mesenchyme cells still in our body. So mesenchyme cells are the most abundant in an embryo because it's, you know, in the process of making all these connective tissues, but we still have these stem cells in our body and that allows us, no matter what age we are, to have the ability to still use these stem cells, which we call mesenchyme cells, to make a connective tissue. All right? Okay, so that sort of sums up the characteristics of the connective tissues. Um, we're going to end this video so that we can get started with learning about the classification of the connective tissues, which is very different from how the epithelial tissues were classified.